And now turning to Washington, D.C., where tomorrow world leaders will gather to mark the 75th anniversary of the collective defense treaty known as NATO, at a time when the president is seeking to unite both the alliance and his party here at home. The president touting his record with NATO in an exclusive interview with MSNBC this morning. The rest of the world is looking, our allies are looking for U.S. leadership. Who else, who else do you think could step in here and do this? I expanded NATO. I solidified NATO. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Gary, Gregory Meeks from New York. He is the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, it's always a, a pleasure to see you. I thank you so much for your time. What's your reaction to what we heard from the president this morning? I think the president told the truth. Uh, history is going to reflect this president is doing a tremendous job. NATO now is stronger than ever as a result of the efforts of this president. You now have, you know, as opposed to NATO being weak, which Putin had counted on, they're more united than they've ever been before. And we have two new members in Finland and Sweden. So the president has been a unifier. And as we look at the 75th anniversary of NATO, NATO is more important now than ever, unlike the viewpoints of the uh, challenger to the president, who basically, when he was president, said NATO uh, may have outworn its usefulness, and who has also said Russia can do whatever they want to to some of our NATO allies. No, Russia is trying to wait out till November, uh, hoping that he could, that the other guy can get elected, uh, and that Biden continuing to unite uh, the, the, the United States, our EU, our NATO allies, as well as, because what I think is unprecedented, Again, led by this president, we have our Indo-Pacific partners also working with NATO uh, and talking about some of the other challenges we have around the world. So it's not the United States alone or America alone, America only. It's us with our democratic uh, allies. Yeah, I mean, just to think of, you know, the historic statement of Finland and Sweden joining NATO, just that in and of itself is so remarkable. Add all the other things that you mentioned, Congressman. But meanwhile, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Stephen Horsford, put out a statement supporting the president as the nominee. Do you support the president as well today? Yeah, look, the president has done a great job. I think that the only reason why we're having this conversation is one horrible debate. That's what he had. He had one horrible debate. Uh, and I think that the president has said that keep watching him, and he will show that it was one horrible debate. And I believe that there will be, uh, in fact, I'm told there's going to be a number of press conferences uh, that uh, he will have. He'll meet the general media, and he'll be able to articulate uh, whatever questions that are asked of him, uh, but to show what he has done and what he will do in a next administration. Congressman, have you been in touch with the president recently? I haven't talked directly to the president recently, but I was with the president in, uh, in, uh, in France. Uh, I heard him make a remarkable speech there, really bringing people together again in, in Normandy. Uh, I've been with them in meetings uh, a month or so ago at the White House. Uh, again, strong leadership, uh, strong talking about how we're bringing uh, the democratic world together to go against people who seem to be very friendly to the former president, like Vladimir Putin, who, you know, the former president uh, said their intelligence was stronger than American intelligence and, in fact, gave away national security uh, uh, information to the Russians in the White House, uh, you know, unlike uh, him, the former president, who seems to be more friendly with Kim Jong-un than our NATO allies. Uh, and so, look, the president has led, continues to lead, uh, and the, 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 the leadership that he has provided has brought the world, the democratic world, closer together to make us all safer together than we would be if we were doing this by ourselves. That is what the authoritarians hope, that we would be divided. The leadership of Joe Biden has prevented that from happening. And the issue of 
folks that are divided. I know you were on that call with your other Democratic colleagues and the minority leader in the House, Akeem Jeffries, where some Democrats called on the president to step down. What would you say to them, and what do you think going forward needs to be clarified? Look, I think that all are looking... Everybody's really on the same page. What we understand is that Donald Trump cannot be president again. He's an existential threat to democracy. Now, what I think, thank God, Democrats are not Republicans. Republicans just flock in one line. That's something that endangers democracy. That's what happened in the 1930s. The Germans just walked in line with Hitler and Stalin. They just walked in line. Democrats like to speak and think on behalf of the constituencies that they represent. Now, I think that it was hugely a mistake, and I don't like the fact that that meeting was leaked. Because what Leader Jeffries is trying to do is bring us all together and listen to every Democrat in the House of Representatives so that we can get everybody's opinion. And that's what we do in a Democratic Party. And we talk to one another so that we can reach our shared goal, our shared goal of making sure that we, may, we win the House, we maintain the majority in the Senate, and we win the presidency. Uh, and so that's what's going to happen. And I think that the president has another opportunity uh, in these press conferences that he will do, in these town hall meetings that he will do, to show that he is the best messenger to deliver the message to the people of the United States of America. And, Congressman, uh, you, all of this talk of, you know, the, the 75th of NATO and, and all these important issues that you have just been uh, underlining, and even this whole talk of the division between the Democrats, some Democrats, and, and the president's campaign, I always fear that this kind of talk uh, clouds also critical things that seem to be put on the wayside. There is a process going on in Venezuela right now, as you know, where Maduro is holding these sham elections. Maria Corina Machado continues to be in the street, getting tens of thousands of people on her side and yet not able to run. We know what the human rights violations are in Cuba. They're at record numbers. Haiti continues to be a country in crisis. And it seems as though, Congressman, a lot of this seems to be clouded in these other discussions. Well, you're absolutely right. In fact, just before I came on air, uh, I was talking to members of the administration about just that. We were talking about Haiti. Uh, we were talking about Venezuela. We we're talking about the Sudan, where there is uh, atrocities that's taking place on a daily basis. Uh, and of course, we talked about uh, what's taking place in Ukraine and what's taking place uh, in, uh, in, in Gaza between uh, Israel and Hamas. Uh, so all these things are going, are going on. And guess what? President Joe Biden has been in the middle of all of it trying to bring people together. We are still, just today, reports that talks are being are re, are resumed uh, as far as peace uh, and having a ceasefire in the Middle East. And we just saw that 60 percent of uh, Israeli citizens want and support the Joe Biden plan. Um, so it's bringing folks together. Uh, and I think that's what's key. And I think we'll get there as a Democratic Party. You know, democracy, true democracy, is never easy. It's messy. But then we get it together and we move on and we win. You know, I look, I've been there before. I've been there during the primary season of 2020. Uh, and, uh, and I've seen Joe Biden come back. Congressman Gregory Meeks, always uh, a pleasure to speak with you. I thank you so very much for your time. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.